Hi guys, this is Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. And this short video is going to detail how to construct a histogram from a grouped frequency distribution. Uh, well, for this particular video we're going to assume that we have a grouped frequency distribution. In one of my previous videos uh, we have constructed this grouped frequency distribution from raw data. So if you're still a little bit unsure about how to construct a grouped frequency distribution, I would recommend maybe having a look at that particular video. Okay. But to construct a histogram from a grouped frequency distribution is pretty straightforward. Okay. Uh, well, let me just grab some graph paper, okay? So to construct it, we'll, we'll always try to construct it on graph paper, okay? Uh, a histogram is basically a chart. Uh, there's a vertical axis, okay? And there's a horizontal axis, okay? The horizontal axis represents the variable, okay? That we were measuring. In our case, Facebook friends, okay? So let's say Facebook friends or how many Facebook friends an individual has so Facebook friends and this particular axis is graduated and it's graduated based on the intervals okay so we can see that our first interval begins with a 5 so let's just actually start here let's just start here let's say this is 5 let's say it goes to 18 18 then goes to 31 31 goes to 44 44 goes to 57, 57 goes to 70, and 70 goes to 83. Okay. So this particular axis here now represents the variable Facebook friends, or how many Facebook friends an individual respondent has. Now just be careful here, the scale is not consistent, as in this represents the distance of 5, but each one of these intervals represents the distance of our class width, which is torqued in. So I'll just put that little symbol in here to indicate, it's like a little spring to say that that particular interval here isn't, represent, isn't a representative size uh, with respect to the others. Okay, uh, the vertical axis represents our frequencies. It doesn't have to represent the raw frequencies, it could represent relative frequencies or percentage frequencies. But for their purposes, it's going to represent our frequencies, so we'll symbolize that by small f, which is the number of people, or the number of respondents, yeah, okay? The number of respondents, yeah, okay, which is our frequency. And we can see that the maximum number of respondents in any particular interval is 14. So what we could do is we could go up in, in intervals to, to get to 14. If we said that this was, let's say, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, that would do. Let's see, can we do any better? To make it, Try to use as much of the of the, the space as possible. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. If we go up in twos, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. That's a little bit more representative. So it's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. Okay, so we've represented both of our axes. Okay, now what we do is for each one of our intervals, okay, we create a bar of the appropriate height. Now, in our particular instance here, each of our classes has the same class width, it's a width of 13. They don't necessarily have to have the same class width. But what is important is that our unit of measure, let's say our class width, times our, our how many times the, a, the class width is within the interval, times our frequency represents the area of the bar. Okay? But let's not complicate it and let's just uh, consider this particular scenario. Every class has the same width. So each class is going to have a height specified by its frequency. So between 5 and 18, we'll have a bar of height 4. So between 5 and 18, we'll have a bar of height 4. Between 18 and 31, we'll have a bar of height 10. Between 31 and 44, we have a bar of height 12. Between 44 and 57, we have a bar of height 14. Between 57 and 70, we have a bar of height 9. That's in around here. And between 70 and 83, we have a bar of height 3, which is in around here somewhere. Okay, and we join these up like so to create what is called a histogram. Okay. 
histogram is just another representation of our distribution okay in this particular situation here our distribution is represented in a table which we call a grouped frequency distribution these 52 values could be represented as raw data okay? that's still the distribution but it's raw data uh, in this situation here it's represented in a chart and this chart is a histogram and it's straightforward to calculate or to create a histogram okay? uh, it's a straightforward to create a histogram once we have the group frequency distribution some things to note about the histogram is its shape the shape of this histogram seems to be relatively normal okay that's important for us uh, so from this particular perspective you could you could i suppose estimate uh, the average or the mean of this particular distribution from the histogram well because we have a normal curve plotted over it uh, well the, one of the properties of the normal curve is that the mean is down the center so maybe the mean down the center would be down here so maybe the mean of this particular distribution is in we could estimate it to be in around 44 okay uh, so that was uh, how to create a histogram from a group frequency distribution. I hope that was helpful. Uh, this was Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland.